Our vision is to invent the future of live production control, and on that journey, the time has truly come for audio control from your favorite Skahoy panels. And the Waveboard is an amazing audio control panel for just that. It's hosting eight motorized faders, a crisp display for labels and VU metering. It has three buttons with two-way functionality, and it has an encoder with the display on top. Best of all, it fits perfectly next to your Vision Mixer panels from Skahoy, so you can keep the design line of your studio set up while you're meeting all the practical requirements you have. No wait, actually the best is that the Waveboard is so flexible that you can mix and match control of multiple different audio devices. And in this video, we'll look at our new integration with Yamaha's lineup of digital mixers such as the CL, QL, TF, DM and the PM series. But as you'll see, we have channel configurations ready for many other audio brands too. For the demonstration today, I have a Yamaha QL5 console. I also have a Waveboard V2 connected to it. And we'll go through the functionality we have mapped down in this demonstration. It can be many other things, as you'll see. But let's just start out with what it does here on the first bank of eight faders. So, you will see the faders on the console is moving along me, moving the faders on the waveboard, and the opposite is true as well. So essentially what we have done is we have taken eight input channels and mapped onto the waveboard. The buttons on the panel also corresponds to the buttons you have on the console, so we're essentially just bringing that over. So in this case, we are basically um, turning on and off the channel. So that's the mute button that we have here on the on the lower side. We have also matched the colors up with the console, which is nice, right? Then uh, above that, we have another button and that it has a little label in display. It's a Q button. So with this one, you're basically soloing your channels. You can see it's happening on the mixer as well. So again, there's like full correspondence between me changing things on the waveboard and on the QL5 console. This button is gain. And this is where two-way functionality on a button is pretty cool. Because even though it's a button, we can actually press the lower and upper edges. Oh, sorry. Actually, it's this one. You can see it in the display right now. If you look closely, you can see the gain value is changing. Now, to see that on the console, you'll have to look in the displays after selecting the channel up here. But luckily, I have software on my computer, so we can... Uh, look inside the uh, the channel setup here. You see the gain value is up here, and as I'm now again changing the gain of this channel, I see it's moving here. But also, I think if this one is selected, you'll see the same is happening somewhere in this interface. You find the gain knob right here, and this is true also for balance. So if I'm changing the balance, you can see on the pan. You see those values are right here. We also decided to use labels like you like you see uh, L11. Um, just like the Yamaha console is doing, we do the same on the waveboard to make sure that these environments are as similar as they can be. I like to think that one cool thing about having this broken out in this way is that such as gain, map down on this four-way button can now be adjusted for every channel straight away, like direct access, instead of having to select it. And that goes for other parameters that we have implemented as well. Just in this case, we have put out gain because we think this is the most useful by default. I want to move on to the next page. So if we go to this one, we have the DCAs, all right? And to see that reflected on the console, I'll change the bank over like this. So in the middle here, you see these DCA channels are mapped down on the faders. And once again, there's full correspondence between me working on the faders here and also uh, on the console. The same is true for the buttons. The um, These are reflected both ways. Okay, so that is to be expected. If we move on to the next page, we have mapped other things such as stereo channels. And we also have some, I think, master mixes over here. Yes. All right. So to see that, I think we'll go to this one. Okay, so not true. I'll just go back to this. It was actually right there. Now here, notice one thing. Stereo channels is actually two faders up here, but we mapped it down onto one fader in this case. So if I move this fader, this one follows along, but we only need one fader because it's a stereo channel and we're not supposed to actually uh, control each one of them uh, individually when it's a stereo pair. So um, that is mapped down. Again, we have solo and uh, we also have uh, solo was up here. Yes, and muting is down here. Uh, what about the next one? The next one, the next one, all stereo pairs. We have now come to the mixes and they are distributed on the last four faders of this bank. So the first fader will move just a solo mix 
And then the last two faders, notice that these are paired and they are paired both on the console and on the waveboard. So regardless of which fader I'm actually touching, you'll see the flying faders on both panels are following along. Also notice that we have VU metering in the displays where there is content to show in the VU meters. So this is something that we can use these beautiful high resolution vertically oriented displays to give you really detailed stats on the audio on your console. So they are following along the VU metering that you see on the console itself. On the final bank, we have the matrices and they are mapped onto uh, these faders here. Once again, it's the same sort of details that there's full correspondence between the system and the faders over here. And here we have the um, masters on um, the last faders over here mapped down. So yeah, actually matrices on the first uh, six. Uh, I just realized, and then we have masters over here. Notice sometimes there are parameters which are not available. Like in this case, uh, the, the balance is actually, it has a little icon that says that you can't touch it. Um, the others can be touched. This one can't because it is for whatever reason not available in the configuration we are having right here. But uh, you can touch it in the other cases. In, in, uh, in this situation, you see that these are linked. They are also linked up here on the parameter. And one little detail that is often found on Skyhawk controllers is you can press and hold the encoders and it's going to reset to the default value. Here at the end of the video, I want to take you into Reactor, which is the software that is running inside the waveboard and it is connecting to the Yamaha mixer. And it also allows you to configure everything the way you want it to be. So it's still easy because this is basically the setup. We have added the Yamaha mixer model over here. If I wanted to add another one, and maybe it's not discoverable, but if I type in this, you see I, I would select another unit. I would set up its IP address. I would also select which model it is, which um, brings about some reflection on, yeah, it's so like the system knows which features are available on any of these uh, devices. Now, in this case, I will just uh, delete it again because obviously I don't need it. But um, we have our console over here connected already. So it's just as easy, really, to set up this. If we edit this, you'll see it's just a matter of the IP address, essentially, and selecting the model ID. Over here, you pick the Waveboard Generic Audio Control. That configuration is what gives you the ability to mix and match almost everything onto this one. You see we have specific controls as well. Actually, we have one where we could uh, combine this into a 12, or even we could go beyond that. We could go to 20 or 28 faders in one long row by picking the two or the three Waveboard plus Waveboard Mini configurations, and that would give you the same ability, as you see on this one, just spread across multiple panels. And that's the modularity Skahoy brings about that you would see in, in action right there. But today we just, we choose the basic ones and all the mapping happens inside the channel configuration right here. You can select which audio channel that you actually want to affect. So depending on your system, there'll be a long list of input channels to choose from. You can pick an alternative label instead of the one that we are providing. You can also pick a color for instance. So if I wanted to paint this channel purple instead, then I could paint it purple and that's the color it has. And there are some advanced options hidden in here. But this is basically uh, how you can customize each of these channels. You can also change them around. And that's actually a fun little exercise. So if you look at these two channels right now, if I, if I just reorder them, notice what happens on the panel. They are swapping place. That's great, right? So really easy to like customize your panel here. And as I said, you can mix other brands in as well. So what does that mean? This is so unique ability of the waveboard to be absolutely ridiculously careless what it's no not careless i mean it does take care of your audio control but it doesn't matter to the waveboard whether you're controlling the yamaha the, the fader next to it could be some broadcast device or another audio console or another yamaha on another ip address doesn't matter because it's picking the configuration selecting the device id that goes along with it and then you're done I am sure you are convinced by now that the Waveboard is an extremely cool device, but why would you want it when you have a beautiful console like the QL5 already? Well, for starters, not every audio mixer is a console. There are rag mixers out there without a console where it's obviously meaningful to add a physical control surface like this one. But the most powerful application of the Waveboard is in the many cases where your operators need access to selected channels from any mixer. And for that, Waveboard is extremely hard to beat. 
Thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to stay updated. Connect with us on social media. We love to hear from our loyal and dedicated users for any sort of feedback on how we can ease your life in live production.